Welcome back for our final segment with talent manager Marv Dower. I'm Mark Sykes. You're watching the Virtual Channel Network. And let's talk about Hollywood in 2008. This has been a crazy year. Every person I've talked to, without fail, has said this has been the toughest year in the business. It's the toughest year they've seen. What are, what's your opinion on 2008? Are I agree going to survive 100%. it? What? No, it's been the worst year ever. I mean, you've basically because they can't get insurance to make big movies and we could have another strike and certainly we have the writer's strike. Less pilots, less work, and I mean, it's just, it's been horrible. Less commercials because they didn't have enough new television shows. What happened to pilot season? Well, we were on strike during the main part of it. The and strike, now, is there going to be a pilot season in February or is it going to be all, all year now? Nobody knows. I mean, they're still doing some pilots, but not very many. Very, very few. And certainly pilot season last February, March, and April was very poor. But what I'm hearing for the first time ever is that there's pilots in August, September. Uh, there's been a couple in yeah, October. Yeah, there's a few. Yeah, there's a few. Seems but odd. not like it used to be. No. We used to have, what, a, about 130, 140 pilots every year? Yeah, all in February and March. But they were, we were on strike, and then they never caught up. I yeah. think a lot of people thought erroneously that as soon as the strike was over, there was going to be 130 pilots casting in April and May. Except they didn't and have anybody to happened. write them. They had no one to write right. those pilots, so right. they didn't have any pilots. Not so many. we effectively may have seen the end of a pilot season. Well, it's certainly Obviously, 2008. There will, there will still be pilots. Yes. yes. But we may this coming year, because everything's got a ripple effect, we may see just pilots become a year-round thing. It could be. I, I hope so. I mean, we need some pilots. I Parents... Mean, might want to pay attention to that rather than coming out here for a month oh, or just two. For, you mean like in the February actors in New York March, come out, right? I agree. They might want to wait and I see agree. what this year, 2009, is going to be like. Um, I think I think we need a strike vote and then hopefully get through all this and maybe if we get things on track, we'll have a normal pilot season in 2009. We could, okay. but you got to get through this stuff. All yeah, another time. strike would kill that. Uh, oh, it would kill the industry for a long time. Yeah. How do you catch up? I mean, we well, no, we haven't caught up yet. No. From the no. last. And it would just get further and further behind. Okay. It's been the worst year. We're on the same page point. about that. Oh, absolutely. Neither one of us wants a strike. Unfortunately, oh, no. neither one of us is an actor no. or a member of SAG, so that's not going to help. Yeah, we have no say. All right. One of my recurring themes. I write a column about this every year. The month of December, both as a casting director and as a teacher, I watch actors just fly away for the month of December, some as early as Thanksgiving, and they basically say, okay, goodbye 2008. Um, I'll be in town for a couple weeks in December, but then I'm leaving on the 12th right. to go home, and I'll be back on the 9th of January. I mean, I've seen a lot of actors make things happen in, in December. What's going on? Well, it's a for great you? time to stay here because some of the shows, or most of the shows cast, I think, to like the 15th of December. Right. So many people leave town, you have a hell of a lot better chance to get a job if you stay here. And Good so, to hear. And so, and really, they don't, they don't think they stop shooting till about the 15th and 20th of December. Yeah. And now the talent pool is dried up. So if you stay here, I mean, if you go away, the... 20th of December, you can go home still for three weeks. You don't have to come back before the 10th of January. So it's a great time to stay here. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, if you wanted meetings with agents and managers who stick around, they're not busy. Right. But there's enough roles to stay in town. That's a great time to be here. I'd rather see somebody go away in June or July. Well, there's a lot of Christmas parties, Absolutely. too, and agencies yep. and management companies have parties. And so it's a great networking Net month. Great network. The best. I mean, you can go to a party every single night. And Absolutely. Oh, yeah. At uh, least one. The whole business is, 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 is who you know. I hate to say it. but boy, Now, you know this yourself. I know it because I realized the first year in the business when I was losing all my money that just by starting out, so I tried to think of something that was different, and what I did was I was a pretty good golfer, so I put together, it took me a few months, a golf game of like 25 major producers. My buddies had like 100 shows on the air, and I was in charge of that every Saturday. Right. So now when I called them, they didn't know if I was calling to see Eva LaRue or to tell them tee-off time was at 10.30. I was, uh, I played in a lot of national bridge tournaments. I found out who in our business was high up, like John Feldheimer, a tri-star, he was right. running a, Tristar, we started playing bridge together. So, and then I had uh, season hockey tickets in the first row when Wayne Gretzky came here. Everybody wanted to go, so I started selling. T I sold tickets from everybody to from Leslie Moonvest to Mark Hirschfeld to Tester. Did everybody want to go to hockey? Right. So those things. Now they didn't know I was calling because if you just make a phone call, it's not as easy. But now I was sort of friends with these people. So hockey, bridge, and golf really, really helped me. And mm -hmm. everybody, you know. It helped me a lot more than you know trying to sell a client because I made friends and they got to meet my clients and then if there was something they would help you you like to have a 
a major producer in the room when your clients read for a big part. They right. might not get it, but you know they're going to get every consideration. And I'm still doing that through these days, playing golf with people. That's going to help my clients. Well, I think you've seen this with other casting directors as well, but I see your, your clients. You know, I, I'm a fan, and I've brought them in at this time of year. I yep. am, the past, three out of the past four years, I've been casting until December 21st. Right. I've had sessions that day. Isn't that great? And the agents say, oh, he left town. Half, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I book four days in advance because I know I'm going to get a huge drop-off. Right. And I require mm -hmm. confirmations. And then other actors I ne wasn't necessarily going to see get appointments because they're still here. As long as you live in North America, you can get home for Christmas if you leave by the 22nd of December. Absolutely. And make your reservations now. But and it's you've got a great that whole time week. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because there's nothing going on between Christmas and New Year's. We know that. No, no. Or the week after New How Year's. much time do you really need to spend with your family? Let's oh. be honest. That's what we'll I guess if your family's in the Caribbean, you need more time. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. But that's rare. No, that's... I agree with you. There's so many parties that you can go to. So many people. You can never meet enough people in this business, and uh, and a lot of them can help you. And uh, it, there's not enough time in the day if you really, really want it. Especially as an actor, when you realize the competition, you got to go after it, and you've got to make it everything. You know, I put everything second. I hate to say it, but the competition's that tough. Would you agree with that? I, I mean, would, just I would brutal, agree with it 100%. You know? And if two people are equal, the one that has more credits gets the job, just like if you and I are producing, we, we're going to go with the known quanti quality. Always. And quantity, depending on who, you know, we don't want to take a chance. It's our money. Let me throw a quote sure. out at you. Our good friend Tom Harrison, we've both known him for years. A number of years ago, we were in a meeting, I was with him, and he gave me a quote about uh, his approach to the business. And actors, and he said something that I've quoted a million times: "Actors are the first people in this industry to give up their power, to walk into a room with an agent, a casting director, and just become powerless." What do you think about that? I think there's a lot of truth to it. Unless you're a major star, then you have the power. But otherwise, I mean, and you and I've talked about it. It's so subjective. One person could say that person was the best one for the part, and the other one could say. That, and I've seen this. It reminds me of my ex-wife. I don't want to hire her. I mean, everything. It's just so many variables that are so unfair in that room. Or somebody gets a phone call, the producer, and doesn't even see you, the actor. I mean, so they are powerless. you got to hope. I've heard casting directors read the newspaper where people are reading for a part. You well, and if I want to yeah. sign with you, and right. I'm lucky enough to get a meeting with you, when I walk into the room... I don't want to walk in like a desperate person or a needy person. No. Don't I want to walk in like a force to be reckoned with? Don't I want to walk in with some power? Because you're going to be interested in someone who's going to book and make money. Well, let's go back to what we said. Can you light up a room? Right. That's that's a great quote. And boy, if you can bottle that. Okay. And you can feel it when they come in the door. Yeah. It, it's it's palpable. Absolutely. You know. Okay. Find me more evil roots than John O'Hurley. They, they know how to do it. I don't know what book they read. Maybe it was How to Win Friends and Influence People. Whatever it is, it's worked for a long time. Excellent. I read that book, too. Marv, I want to thank you for talking to us today. This has been incredibly informative and candid, and I hope everyone is going to get a lot out of it. And I thank you from I the bottom of my heart. Thank you. It was fun. Thank you. You're welcome.